Okay. Um, so I'm going to run through this really quick. You do need to have your worksheet out. It should be 16-1 worksheet. That should be what it's titled. Um, let me present this. Oh, you see it. All right. Uh, so this first section is basically going over um, what psychological disorders are. It just gives you a little bit of insight into what they are. Um, and then the next few sections get into details. So um, this first slide here, I just kind of have an example. I'm going to read this for you. Um, a man living in the Ozark Mountains has a vision in which God speaks to him. He begins preaching to his relatives and neighbors, and soon he has the whole town in a state of religious fervor. People say he has a calling. His reputation as a prophet and healer spreads. And in time, he is drawing large audiences wherever he goes. However, he then ventures into St. Louis and he attempts to hold a prayer meeting. He blocks traffic on a main street at rush hour. He is arrested. He tells the policemen about his conversations with God and they hurry him off to the nearest mental hospital. So my question for you guys, is this normal or not? Yeah. I think it's normal. 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 I think Hmm. So I think the whole point of this little example here, this is real, this really happened. Um, what they're trying to get at is that, you know, sometimes normal and not normal is pretty subjective. What's normal to you might be not normal to somebody else, which we just experienced because um, Elena and Mia say, well, this is normal. And Danae says, no, it's definitely not normal. Like, it's weird. Probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, so the question, like, are the police officers, or are they in the wrong or is the guy in the wrong? Um, and honestly, I think in this specific case, him saying, I am hearing God speak to me. That's not what's not normal. But him going into a large city and stopping traffic, that is not normal. Does that make sense? Like standing in the middle of the street. So he ended up getting diagnosed with um, paranoid schizophrenia. Um, and he's hospitalized for it. So there is a fine line between what's normal and what's not normal, but there is always, when you cross over um, into not normal, there is um, a bigger issue there. So we are going to look at how to define and identify what is not normal behavior, okay? Uh, so the first thing, you're gonna draw the line between normal and abnormal, and you're gonna look at three things. You're gonna look at deviance, You're going to look at adjustment. And you're going to look at psychological health. So I'm going to give you a second here to write that down. And we'll go into more detail with the three of those in a second here. The second thing is look at the application of these principles in the legal definition of abnormality. So you and I might be like, oh, that's really weird. But no, like what is legal and what is not legal um, in terms of abnormality?
Because there's there's only three. Just fill out three. And the last one is criticisms of classifying. So we're going to look at these three things. What's wrong with classifying? All right. So we're going to look at the deviation from normality first. So deviance this is our first one. So deviance is um, stepping away from the average person. So whatever most people do is normal. So anything outside of what most people do, then is considered abnormal. Now, there, we will definitely get into deviance a lot more in depth um, in sociology. That's like where you get your ser serial killer unit and stuff like that. But understand that like things that are normal would be um i'm it's cold outside i i wear a jacket right like when it's cold out i wear a jacket I'm not, maybe i'm not wearing like a heavy coat but at least i have something on you know or i'm wearing a sweatshirt or whatever what is not normal what deviates from normal is it's cold out so guess what i'm gonna wear my bathing suit outside like that's just not normal and if somebody is like doing that and being like legit serious, like this is like what I do when it's cold, I throw a bathing suit on, that's a little deviant behavior. Um, there's other things as well um, that go along with that, that go along with deviance. Let me think. Um, eating could be different uh we all eat it's normal in america to eat with like a fork and a knife right if you sit down to eat and somebody is like just like straight up putting their head in their plate that's deviant right so there are limitations on deviance though meaning like not everything is like black and white not everything is so cut and dry um cultural limitations so what's normal to us here um or what's normal to the average you know american it's not going to be normal to people in other countries. So for instance, um, as females here, the majority of females in America wear, you know, jeans and t-shirts and whatever, and that's normal. If you go to and I'm Afghanistan, that's not very normal. Like if their religion, like the Islam religion, maybe they are in a full burqa, whatever, you know? That's that's deviant to us, but no, it's not deviant because we know that that happens elsewhere. So cultural limitations definitely can mess with deviation. Um, also, just because the majority of people do it does not mean that it's right or it's best. So just because the majority of people do something one way does not necessarily mean that um, you're wrong for doing something. You're not like wrong for, because the majority of people eat with a fork, you're not wrong for eating with a spoon. Does that make sense? However, yeah, there's some like cut and dry deviance. Like the majority of people don't go around killing others. You do that, that's deviant, that's bad. Let's not just kill people. So you can't take deviation and use it by itself. That's like the main, the main idea here. Do never use deviance as like just because somebody acts differently than the majority of people does not mean ooh they have a psychological disorder. Okay, you can't use that to identify. Adjustment. So when we look at adjustment, we look at how people like uh, fare in the world. If you're adjusting to life in general, you're doing fine. Um, 
it's normal to be able to feed yourself, clothe yourself, work, find friends, and live by the overall rules of society. If you, if something is, something is stopping you within yourself from doing those things, feeding, clothing, working, finding friends, living by rules, that is abnormal. So abnormal is failing to adjust. Um, a lot of times when people are getting diagnosed, like if you, if somebody's trying to diagnose you with depression, they're going to ask you questions about these things. How do you um, get along in the world? Are you, are you able to eat three meals a day? And if you're like, I just like literally sometimes I'm just not even hungry. Like that's abnormal that you are like not taking care of yourself, not feeding yourself. I don't even have the energy to get out of bed. That's abnormal. We need to like look at that a little bit further. Okay. So adjustment is huge. Um, and then I have remember socially acceptable behavior in one society may be um, unacceptable in another. This is the cultural context. Um, so same with like deviance. You need to remember that um, like adjustment is also culturally aware. Um, so just because like the rules of our society might be different in a different society. Does that make sense? Um, like, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of people driving in India, but it's absolutely insane. Like they don't have the same like traffic laws that we do. So just because people are driving and like not stopping at stop signs and whatever, isn't like, uh, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you have a psychological disorder. Like that's not what that's saying. That's just saying like, they live in a different part of the world. They're not used to the way that we do things. So it's important to keep that in mind as well. Okay, and then there's just lots of things to kind of look at with psychological health um, in general. There's this implication that there is an ideal way for people to function. You want, you want to self-actualize. We've talked about that before with Maslow. Um, you want to be able to func be able to function psychologically, mentally, and um, physically and emotionally. You want to be in a good space. Um, so when you're thinking about psychological health, you're looking at psychological health and mental health the same as physical health. So you want to be a well person, um, not just physically, like. <sighs> I, I'm not, I don't have a cold or I don't have flu or I don't have COVID. No, you want to be in a good mental place as well. And the problem with this approach of defining um, abnormality is how do you necessarily know when a person is self-actualizing? That, that's different for everyone, you know? Um, my idea of self-actualized is probably different than Elena's. And Elena's idea of self self actualize is different than Mia's because we have different goals in life. We have different values. We grew up differently. Um, so it's really hard to understand. Are you in a good headspace? I, I don't know that I can answer that question for you. Um, I can't just look at you and decide that you kind of have to decide it yourself. And everyone's going to have a different um, different level of what wellness is. So for me, wellness is um, happy, motivated, eating right, exercising, thinking clearly, getting enough sleep, all of those things that for me, that's like when I'm well, that's what I know it is. For other people, it's like, hey, if I'm hitting two of those six things you just listed, I'm doing great. I am in a good headspace if I'm just getting enough sleep and I'm eating. Boom, I'm done. So it's different for everyone. So there's three things here. Number one, we should all be cautious about judging a person with mental illness because of what I just said. We don't know how other people grew up. We don't know what their idea of self-actualization is. Things are different for everyone. Number two, keep in mind, mild psychological disorders are common. So you can have a psychological disorder 
and it be very mild and it not, um, it might not necessarily be a long-term thing for you. It can come in waves. Um, it also might not take over your life in the way that other psychological disorders take over other people's lives. So if I, if me and Mia both have depression, my depression could be much, much less than Mia's, but I still have it and I still get, um, I still get medicated for it and I still get help for it, but I'm nowhere near the same mental um, suffering that Mia is. It's not the same for everyone, you know, and it's really important to remember that. When a disorder becomes severe enough to disrupt your everyday life, then it is thought of as abnormality. So you can have a mild psychological disorder and it's not necessarily abnormal. Um, it's just, it's, that, that's pretty normal. Like I just need, a, I just need to even talk to somebody. The therapy that I have of talking, I don't even need to be medicated. I just need to talk to somebody and that's what's helping me get through it. Um, but if it's disrupting your everyday life, that's not normal. Um, if you are not able to eat, if you're not able to get out of bed, if you lack all motivation, that is what is uncommon. Okay, if it's really disrupting your life, that's abnormal. Lastly, we have the classification of disorders. This is a DSM-4, there is now a DSM-5 as well. But it basically looks at the essential features of the, of the disorder, the associated features, information on differential diagnosis, and diagnostic criteria. We're going to look at the DSM. I mean, there's like, there are five versions of it. We're going to look at the DSM-5. The fifth version. So what it does is it looks at all of these different things to try and diagnose you. A doctor would, um, a doctor uses the DSM to try and diagnose you. All right, so there's five major axes. This is gonna be the majority. This is gonna be the bulk of your, um, do you need to go back? Okay, I will at the end. This is the majority of your notes, filling this out. You have five different axes. Each axis re reflects a different axis of the patient's case. So number one, the axis one, is classify current sim symptoms in two defined categories. Um, so this is looking at the symptoms that you have, are they more sleep disorder oriented, eating disorder oriented, um, mood oriented, anxiety oriented, whatever. And you'll kind of classify it um, into a specific category. The second is describe developmental disorders and longstanding personality disorders or traits. So you're gonna look at things that like um, you're going to look at any developmental disorders that you've already been diagnosed with. This can be things like speech, autism, language, anything like that. Um, and then any personality disorders or traits. So personality disorders could be like comp obsessive compulsive. You, you have that already, or um, maybe it's a trait that you have. I am a compulsive person. I'm an over-dependent person. And they kind of put all those things in there and they describe them. They then will look at the third axis, which is physical disorders or medical conditions that are relevant. So say you have some brain damage that took place at a younger age, or maybe you got into an accident and now you have some cognitive delays. They would take that into account. Maybe you have a chemical imbalance that they know of. They take that into, a chem um, into account, anything. The fourth is the current stress level at which the person is functioning. So they will take you through like a stress test almost and they rate your stressors 
um, based on what you've um, experienced in the past year, we took like a stress test um, in class and it's, that is not the test that they would use, but it's similar. Um, we took a very watered down version, but just looking at the things that are stressing you out and they'll look in the past year um, where your stress level is at. And the last, this is the highest level of adaptive functioning present, present within the past year. So um, maybe you are doing the best in your social, you're adapting socially, you're functioning really high. Maybe it's at your job, you're functioning really high. Maybe it's your, your free time. Do you spend time with friends, family, whatever? What do you do independently, so on and so forth. So they look at all these different things. I am not a psychologist. Um, so if you come to me and you are like, I think I have depression, I'm going to be like, guess what? You're not going to talk to me about this. You can talk to me about your problems, but I'm not going to diagnose you. And also none of you are psychologists. So it's going to be really hard for you to diagnose yourself. So we talked about a little bit self-diagnosing the other day and how it can be dangerous. And it really can be dangerous because none of us have gone to school long enough to be able to diagnose other people. So just keep that in mind. So this is the last one. If you need to pause it here, you can, but I'm going to end this.